Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to talk about the concept of this horror game that we're going to be building in Godot 4. So I'm going to talk about, you know, the basic concept, the basic ideas, things like that. I'm going to talk about the schedule, which I'm going to give you guys a TLDR because I'm sure you don't want to listen to the whole thing necessarily. Basically, I'd like to do this both in C Sharp and in GD script. So Monday, I'd like to do a GD script tutorial and Friday, I'd love to do a C Sharp tutorial of the same concept. So if we make a character controller in one, we'll make a character controller in the other. And that way we can cover both languages so everybody can see the differences. We can compare and contrast the differences. And finally, we're gonna go through some of the concepts of game design documents and designing out elements such as levels, puzzles, and interface elements. So that's what I have in store for you guys today. So let's go ahead and get started. So I put out a poll a while back where I asked a various monsters that we could do. And you guys chose a Lovecraftian horror style game. And that sounded like a lot of fun. So I figured that, well, let's build something like that. So what I have here in front of me is a game design document that I have created to help show us what we're going to build. Now, I'm not gonna go through how to build a game design document fully, but at least I'll walk through some of the steps here that I have, and more or less, we can talk about like what this game's going to be about. So at first, the game's title is Lost in the Void. Now, that's a working title, not an actual title. If you guys have any better titles after I kind of go over the idea, please let me know in the comments below because honestly, I am awful at coming up with ideas and coming up with things like that. So please, by all means, if you think of something better, please suggest and edit. I would love to get feedback. Now, it's called Lost in Void. It's written by me. Here's our table of contents, basically just our index of where we're at. And let's talk about the game. So the idea is we're going to build an eldritch horror game where a detective gets trapped in his dreams and is forced to confront these beasts called the dream walkers. And he's going to need to deal with his own trauma. And that trauma is due to his past of, of things that have happened in his past. And I haven't fully fleshed that section out, but that's something that we can flesh over the next six months, you know, year or whatever it takes to build this out. Now, the detailed summary is the main character, that's MC, is a detective, and he finds this artifact. And this artifact creates a link between your character and an elder god, allowing the elder god to suck the main character into this dream world or this dream realm. Um, the elder god will create this link because he wants to be awakened. Um and the Necronomicon is a book that allows him to be awoken. And it's only located in the dream realm. So the Elder God traps people into dream, the dream realm to force you to go after the Necronomicon so you can escape, thereby awakening him. Now, the Pillars of Design is going to be stealth, horror, gore, things like that. Um, the story in general, I've kind of gone through it a little bit up here in the detailed summary, but the story is taking place in a place called Hollow Wind Landing. It is a small 18th century city, and it also takes place in the dream world where anything can happen and the dreamwalkers exist. So some backstory. Long ago, the Elder Gods created this universe and they ruled everyone like it was their playthings, right? And um, so these new gods uh, were humans that basically gained godlike powers through rituals, put all the Elder Gods to sleep. And this Elder God wants to be awakened and you must use the Necronomicon to awaken an Elder God. And this can only be found in the dream realm. So... Elder gods are super powerful, and even when they're asleep, they can use their psychic powers to control people. And by using its psychic powers and this artifact, it has trapped the, your main character into the dream realm. So I don't know what the full story beats is going to be, but so far I have the beginning kind of started, and that is the main character investigates 
The main character... The main character investigates some murders in Hollow Wind and finds an artifact smashed in a body cavity. And this artifact creates a link between him and an old god that wants to be awakened. And I haven't fully decided which elder god, but I have a few ideas. Because of this link, he is trapped in his own dream world where he has been tasked to find this book, this Necronomicon. Now, the world for some concept art is Hollowind is a very um, 18th century Germanic. So that's what this is, 18th century Germanic, but like a steampunky, thiefy feeling world, okay? And the dream world is a world that changes shape and each level is basically different, becoming more abstract and stranger. It's a world where time does not exist and is basically formless. So that gives us a lot of flexibility as developers to kind of build what we want, right? We could make this into a today time frame and then have you open the door and suddenly you're in a different time or time zone, or suddenly you are, you know, there's like a train floating in space, right? You could really, really play with this and make it into an interesting level and an interesting world. So that's kind of what I'd like to get with the dream realm characters so we have one character his name is victor duncan uh he is 56 his personality is old and grizzled kind of like the old detectives of of yesteryear and he grew up in hollowind and became a detective as soon as he was capable as soon as they allowed him to he wanted to be a detective so what does he enjoy he enjoys solving murders and beer like every strong man and he also likes cats so there's that and he looks like this concept art right here. Now onto gameplay structure. What are we trying to solve? What do we want to accomplish? So our gameplay loop is the player will go to bed and this will suck them into the dream world. They'll run through a level or levels and that will kind of provide the story and things like that. And once they complete the level, they will aw awaken and the world will be different. Now, I don't know if this is the exact story beats we're going to go. Either A, you will be fully trapped in the dream realm, or B, you will be stuck in this world. I think it would be really interesting to maybe have sub dream worlds or something like that that we could play with. I don't know yet. We'll kind of see how that goes as time goes on. Now, for enemies, we really only have one, and that is the Dreamwalkers. Uh, they hunt after people who are trapped in the dream world. They uh, steal your soul and will stop you from awakening eldritch gods. That's the reason why they exist. They either, I'm thinking they either walk on four legs or two. I'm not sure yet. And these beasts will chase after the player. So how do they fight? Uh, they use their jaws to crush their victims' heads and steal their life force. Or they might pick them up kind of like this guy and suck out their life force. I'm not quite fully sure yet. Now, when it comes to gameplay mechanics, we really don't have a lot of gameplay mechanics that I can think of right off hand that I want to model out just yet. And we'll probably be modeling them out as we play. In order to illustrate kind of how we can build out our gameplay mechanics, we're going to do our using a lantern. So the way that that would work, right, is we would drag in this guy, player, presses, F for flashlight, I imagine, will come in here and then we would come down here and say play lantern animation and we would tween in our light intensity, which I know I spelled that wrong, but I guess we'll go with amount. Tween in our light amount and then we would go and show our lantern. And there we go. And then we'll need to put in a little end here. So let's come up here and do end. And that's basically what we're going to be doing when we do any of our planning. So that's kind of the idea. And I don't want to get too like crazy about it, but that's kind of the idea. Each section that we do a uh, mechanic will build one of these guys so we can kind of, you know, plan out our idea before we actually code it, if that makes sense. So I'll drag this guy in and just kind of make it about the right size. There we go. And that will work for us. Now for art and sound, for our graphic requirements, I'm thinking what we'll do is we're going to do a uh, 3D object scanned real world environment. So what I mean by that is 
Here is a scanned asset that I did just recently uh, for this game, actually. I, I literally went out and scanned this so that way we had a door that looks real. And it looks real. And that's because it is. It's actually a scanned asset. So that's kind of the plan for our game. Now, I'll just kind of grab a screen grab of this guy. And then we can put it in our graphic requirements. But that's what I think we're going to do is something like this. And it's going to look really cool. I have a couple of assets that I've built out that will really make this game pop. And I'm going to go through how to build all these assets and how to scan assets and things like that. I think that that would be really useful for you guys for your games. Because then you can get some really cool looking assets. For sound, I'm thinking we're going to do uh, very little sound. It's mostly going to be ambient noises, no background music. Uh, there might be some like droning sounds, and I do have a concept of that here. So if I paste that and I turn on my desktop audio so you guys can hear it, if I hit play. I'm thinking something kind of like this. It's a nice droney sound that sits in the background, you know, something like that. If we choose to do sound at all that has any type of, you know, non fully sounds, right? Now for level overview, I don't have a full plan of exactly what we're gonna do, but the idea is pretty simple. We have our level map here, which is a very simple map. I'm sure we're gonna be building a lot more levels and we can get into a very detailed tutorial about how to design levels and how to make things feel good for the player and things like that. But in our case, I just wanted to give a basic, this is what the first section is. So the user wakes up from um, sleeping. The world has changed. And if the user actually walks out, they'll see that the entire hallway is still the hallway that they recognized before they went to bed, but it is now covered in blood or it's covered or it's somehow degraded or, you know, spooky, right? And then it's all really dark. The player kind of walks down here and this door kind of swings open slowly. And then that'll prompt the player to actually come in here. And that's usually what I consider good game design is, is prompting the player to do things. And they either will find a lantern or at least a lantern part. Maybe we can add a crafting system to the game. And then they'll come down here. There'll be a door here, but the door will be locked. So that'll force the player through this area, teaching them how to crouch and things like that. And then they have a hallway down here that they can progress to the next section. For puzzles, basically what I'm thinking is the player is going to need to create a lock pick. This door down here is going to be locked and this area down here is blocked. So the player will walk down here, see that this is blocked, and then they'll come down here and they'll see that they have this open area. And this open area has like a cafeteria and maybe a barracks or something like that. And they'll see a dead body here where they'll find a blank lock pick key. And then they have to come up here to some kind of forge or some kind of punch system to punch a lock pick. And that lock pick will be a single use lock pick that will break when they use it. And then when the user comes back here or the player, they'll see that this beast here will run across introducing the player to the fact that there are additional monsters in this world, right? Something that they have to be cautious of. And it'll teach them how to sneak and how to deal with, you know, scary beasts that want to kill them. And we can have a small vent here or something like that. That'll tell that will despawn this guy. So that way he's not actually in the level. So the user doesn't get too used to having this monster around. We only want to tease the monster. We don't want the monster just to show up and exist in the world. We just want to tease that he exists. For UI, all we have is basic concepts, and we're going to make a tutorial specific on UI and how to design UI and the idea behind good flow and good design. But this is kind of what I'm thinking. So basically, just the game name with a start menu, very basic. For the settings menu, I'm thinking something kind of like this. Now, remember, these are wireframes, not actual design. So this is me just kind of putting out an idea of a feeling of how I want things to flow. And basically, you'd have your game, key maps, graphics, sound, and then your settings like this. And of course, the design of these will change. These buttons will not look like this in the final production. But this is at least the idea. 
for our pause menu, I'm thinking we could have our continue options and quit. I don't think we need a save or load mechanic. I'd like to make that an in-game mechanic instead. I think it'd be interesting to follow like Resident Evil where you have a specific number of items that you can save, a specific points that you can save. Then it makes it a little scarier because it's do I save now or do I save this and save later? For development tools, we're going to use Krita, Godot, Blender, and Metashape. Uh, most of these tools, most of you guys probably know, Metashape is a tool that allows you to do photogrammetry and photo scanning. So that's the reason why this tool is on there. It's a paid tool, but it's one of the best in the industry. And there is an alternative called Meshroom, which I will cover when we do our art asset tutorial. Uh, well, probably tutorials, or maybe I'll do some streaming where I'll show you guys how to use these tools. For our team, it's going to be all me, pretty much. So we'll just kind of run through, um, you know, project manager and all that. I'd love to hire a person to do it, but unfortunately, hiring somebody would just not be, you know, financially able to happen. So it's all going to be me. For our schedule, I don't actually have a schedule 100% figured out because there's going to be suggestions and requirements and you know, people are going to ask me to cover specific things. So I don't want to lock myself into just a specific schedule, but here's the current plan. But here's the current plan. I'm going to do twice weekly tutorials. Monday will be GD script and Friday will be C sharp. And the Monday tutorial will be um, focused on a concept. And the Friday tutorial will take that exact same concept but do it in C sharp. That way we can compare and contrast at the end what we want our game to be written in and which language is better, which of course the answer is there isn't one, but it'll be interesting to see if anything, if there's any differences. For market analysis, I mean, I don't really want to run through all of this because it's kind of boring, but basically the other games that we're kind of using as a general idea is Amnesia, Call of Cthulhu, and Five Nights at Freddy's. Basically, Amnesia has a similar setting, but our assets are scanned and we're focused on a dream world. Call of Cthulhu is a similar concept, but their horror is not as good as our, our spooky horror style. I want to do more um creepy and scary not just creepy five nights at freddy's is a lot of jump scares and i want to avoid jump scares and i want to do a lovecraftian style not a today creepy you know uh animatronic -y style for our risk assessment plan we really don't have that much risks it's basically just you know if we choose to stop working on it because the game just isn't working out right i think motivation would be our biggest risk but that's the general idea. And we don't really have any addendums for this, but we are gonna come back to this game design document. I plan to actually come back to this game design document often to update it and do things like that. And of course, this is shared in the link in the description below so you guys can check it out. Now, with all that being said, what are we building? So we're building a game that is a horror game that is inspired by Lovecraft where a guy gets trapped in a dream world because a elder god wants to be awoken and so he's forced to find the Necronomicon. So that's the general idea of the game. We're going to try to avoid jump scares and we're going to try to build a realistic environment by using photo scanned assets. So I would love your guys' feedback before we get started on this. And this week, we're probably this coming week, we're not going to do our first set, but next week I will start on it and we will do a, you know, setting up the environment and building out a character controller. So that'll be next week what our plans are. So give me your feedback because I'd love to make any adjustments to this. But that is all I have for you guys today. So thank you so much again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Thanks.